Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to be running through the new navigation features in Ableton Live 10. So for this video I'm going to let this entire project just play all the way through and then I'm going to demonstrate the new shortcuts and navigation features a few times and I'm also going to put the keyboard commands on so you can see exactly what I'm pressing and get a feel for these shortcuts. So the first one is we can now zoom in to the arrangement and detail view on a selection using the Z and the Shift Z shortcuts. So if I press Z, you can see we can zoom in and if I press Shift Z, we can zoom back out and that's doing that on a track or a global basis. So that's the first shortcut. And what we can also do is we can actually do that from the context menu. So you see here we have zoom to arrangement time selection or Z. And then we can right click and zoom back to arrangement time selection or shift Z. And we also get those commands as well up here in the view menu. Also what we can do is we can scroll either using the trackpad with two fingers or we can do it with the mouse. So you can see we can scroll up and down, which isn't a new feature, but we can also do is we can scroll left and right. And what we used to have to do is we'd actually have to use this bar or we'd have to use this area up here. So that's a nice extra feature to go left and right. As well as that, we've also got two more commands for scrolling, and I think these are the most useful. So we've got holding down command while scrolling vertically, and that's gonna zoom in on the mouse pointer. So if I want to zoom in on this chorus here, I put my mouse over there, hold down command, and I can zoom in just by scrolling on the mouse. And then I could even zoom in over here, and if I zoom back out, we'll do that again. So command and zoom in, and then zoom back out again. And then what we also have is we have the Alt command. So exactly the same again, we're using vertical scrolling. And what this is gonna do, it's just gonna open the track up. So if I open or close the track, and as you can probably imagine, we can select multiple tracks. So I'll select all of these in this group. I can close them, I can open them. And if I wanted to, I could even select the entire project, or at least the main groups. I can open those right the way up, or I can close them down. And then what we can also do, as you're probably already aware, is we have these little group icons here and you can see them change to show you if the group is open or closed. And we have our groups within groups. We also have the show all tracks function. So if I open all these up and we can see we've got a whole load of things going on on the screen. We can't really see exactly what's going on with the arrangement. Now all I have to do is right click and hit this button here, show all tracks, or I can also do that from the view menu, show all tracks here, or the keyboard command, which is S. So I'll just press S now, and you can see that collapses it down and it gets as many tracks as possible on the screen. All the groups are shut and all the tracks are minimized. And then we open these groups up again and we can see they're nice and neat. However, if we did open up our tracks within a group like this drum track here, you can see they are still expanded. So what we can then do is just go Command A to select all of the tracks in the group. And then we could just use the Alt command to close these back down again. So the show all tracks function is real good for collapsing everything down and seeing the arrangement from a more distant view. But if you go back into your groups, they're still going to be exactly as you left them. So you can dive straight back into work. If you're on Windows, you can now also scroll horizontally by using the Shift modifier key. And also on US keyboards, you now no longer have to use the Shift key for if you're using the plus and minus to zoom in. So something to bear in mind with this is that you do actually have to select some time. You can't just be on a track. So if I press plus and minus now, you can see nothing is happening. However, if I select this area here, plus zooms me in and minus zooms me out and that's in nice tidy increments. So that's a real nice shortcut to use as well if you find that the scrolling shortcuts aren't for you or you don't want to use the zoom shortcuts using Z and Shift Z. The next thing is the way time is selected so it gives you a much more detailed view. So if we go and open these drums up, let's just have a look at some of these. I'll open them right up using the Alt shortcut. So what we have here is if I go into the detail view as I select this area, you can see it's only showing me my selection. So what it's doing here is it's updating responsively, which is real nice, but it's only gonna do that up to the clip loop point. So you can see that's these four bars here, and it's not gonna show me any more unless I consolidate. 
So if I press Command and J, you can see now it will let me do this. But I do have to select using the lower half of this clip. Likewise, this also works with audio. So just find an audio track. And it's the exact same concept with audio. You can see it's going to select and show us the audio up until it repeats itself. And once again, I'd have to consolidate this if I wanted to see more. But it's a really nice feature because it only shows you exactly what you need to see. Finally, we have a nice feature where if I just press S and shut all this down, to open these drums again actually. So say I want to make a duplicate of this hat loop. You can see I've got a EQ3 on there and I've also got these clips. So say I want to use the exact same track with the same devices on this clip, then what I can do is I can just select this clip and then I can drag this down into the drop files and devices here area. So we'll just grab this and take it down and I can release that and what it's going to do is it's going to drag that clip down and it's going to drop it onto a track with the exact same devices. So you can see we've still got the EQ3 there. So just so you can see that again, I'll do it for a MIDI clip. So here we've got a MIDI clip. I just grab this snare and drag this down here. Remember I must press ALT, which I didn't do for the last time. So if I drop that with the ALT command, it's kept the snare there that we had, but it's also duplicated this snare and we still have the full device chain. So it means we don't have to go in and press command D or duplicate. We now can just drag and drop. So before I forget, let's just quickly patch up the hat loop one because I copied it and then deleted it. So I'm just going to duplicate this out. Another new feature, which is in the session view, is we now have the ability to be able to drop our devices onto anywhere on the scene area for the master channel. So whereas we used to have to drop these either directly onto the master down into the audio effects area, now what we can do is we can simply just drop it into the scene area. So just to show you this, I'll loop up the chorus area and I'll find you a nice obvious effect. So let's go for a ping pong delay. And now we can drop this just here onto the scene area and we can hear that's kicking in straight away. And the final thing is the follow actions button here. So if we go back across and you can see we can turn this on, we can turn it off. If we turn it on, I'll just zoom in. You can see this is now following exactly what's going on. And if we were to do anything on this screen, it's going to turn it off. But now you can see I can make an edit. So maybe I want to put some more hats in here, which is absolutely fine. And now when I press stop, it's gone from the blinking orange to yellow. And when I press play again, I don't actually have to reactivate it. So just so you can see that again, go for snare, make an edit, stop. Start. So that's all well and good because it means we don't have to keep turning the follow actions on and off when we're trying to do something like automation or we're trying to figure out how our arrangement sounds but we can also do that as well using the shift spacebar command as well and what that's going to do is space is going to stop it and then shift space is going to start it from where we left off. So I just made another edit here which has stopped our follow action and I'll press space and then shift space and we've continued from exactly where we left off. So that isn't a new feature, but it's just a handy shortcut to remember. So that's everything in this video covering the navigation features in Ableton Live 10. And I'll see you in the next video where we're going to start looking at the brand new devices in Live 10.